Alberta Oil Sands, the world's most destructive oil operation presented by me, Angela Fletcher. Meet the Boreal Forest. The Boreal Forest is home to the largest wild caribou herd in the world. It is a place where almost 50% of birds in North America migrate north to breed and raise their young. In fact, there are many birds and waterfowl here. There are wolves and even black bears and grizzly bears. There are even tailing ponds here the size of Florida full of toxic waste. Wait, what? And guess what? There are even indigenous people here that get great health benefits from being marginalized living off of the land and eating fresh fish. Ready to hear it? Ready to hear what they get? What do we have for her, Johnny? Cancer. Yes, they get cancer. Hegemony. A noun. Leadership or dominance, especially by one country or social group, over others. This term will make more sense later as we dive deeper into things. You see, this is Alberta. It is also home to the largest oil reserves on the planet outside of Saudi Arabia. This is a place that post 9-11 has become a global fossil fuel superpower. The Boreal Forest is also our best defense against climate change and global warming. It sequesters more carbon than any other ecosystem. Isn't it ironic then that we are destroying it? We are destroying it and replacing it by producing the most high carbon greenhouse gas emitting oil in the world. We're embarking on something that is socially, morally, physically, and scientifically unsustainable. Alberta produces the dirtiest oil on the planet, but they don't want us to know that. In fact, there's even ongoing conflict in the jargon that's used. Tar sands, used typically by residents and critics of the industry, and oil sands, which is adopted by the government of Alberta and oil industry because it sounds cleaner. Does this image look clean to you? Nope. nope. Remember those images back at the beginning? Those lush fields of birds, caribou, wolves, and other mammals? Well, the truth is, species are disappearing due to the loss of habitat, poisoned waterways, poisoned food supply, as well as climate change that's melting ice caps due to CO2 emissions. The oil industry is turning the boil forest into a toxic wasteland. And we as Americans are their most lucrative market. One of the beliefs of the Cree Nation is that we do not own the land, but the land owns us. Therefore, we, the indigenous people, can share it with you, but we cannot give it to you. Look what sharing has done. Lands that these people have used for thousands of years to hunt from and survive off of are being depleted. The very water these indigenous people used to drink from, bathe in, and fish from has changed. It now has a sheen of oil to it and has caused the fish to have humpbacks and bulging eyes and crooked tails, all due to the toxicity in the water. The Canadian government has not backed the rights of the indigenous people to live free from harm off of the land that is rightfully theirs, but instead has committed genocide by allowing polluting and toxic sludge as a byproduct of oil production to poison and kill off their food chain, killing off the people as well very slowly by way of cancer and other illnesses. Remember that word, hegemony? It plays a very crucial role in the boreal forest. CAP, the Canadian Association of Petroleum Pro Producers, uses groupthink with marketing catchphrases like Alberta's energy or energy is what makes us Alberta. This makes it as if one cannot be separate from the other. It makes what goes on here the norm and the way of life in Alberta. Regardless of the environmental degradation and the science that backs it, environmental issues are very much about who in government or otherwise, such as corporate executives, has power over these decisions. These players never speak in terms of domination or exploitation, but rather something more appeasing to the ear, such as Alberta is ener energy. I mean, after all, that does 
roll off the tongue a little easier and sounds a lot more heroic than exploitation professionals, genocide specialists, or toxic wasteland engineers. Rather than staring at a dead fish, while I've been narrating this, they show you cute, clean little videos like this next slide on just how clean the process of bitumen sends, I'm sorry, bitumen sands is. Take a look. In the oil sands, I'm a kind of oil called bitumen. I was formed more than 100 million years ago in a warm, shallow sea that covered what is now Alberta. Countless tiny plants and animals lived and died in that sea. Their bodies mixed with sand on the sea floor. Time and chemistry worked their magic. Slowly creating bitumen. Like all petroleum, I'm mostly made of carbon and hydrogen. As bitumen, I'm a large, complex molecule. That's why I'm naturally thick and heavy. For millions of years, I've been bound to sand and water from that ancient sea floor. Now it's time to set me free. They even care enough to write a little congratulatory statement on their website about our new president-elect. Now, why would they be so concerned about our politics if we weren't, as a nation, lining their pockets in our mass consumption of their boreal tar sands dirty oil? Congratulations. What they won't show you is the face of someone like Warren Simpson, just one individual that puts a face to the reality of people dying from cancer as a result of the tar sands oil industry. A study was done that yielded staggering results where the cancer rates of indigenous people were 30% higher than they had expected. In 2007, Health Canada said abnormalities in fish were not related to the toxicity levels in the water. They also said that residents needed to limit their consumption levels of the fish. They also said that families should be cautious and not let their children play in surrounding waters due to higher than normal levels of mercury, aluminum, and selenium. They also said this to people surrounded by the very water they spoke of. They won't tell you that heavy equipment is used to log off timber to strip the topsoil, subsoil, and clay. They won't show you the images of the tailing ponds that are seeping into the rivers and poisoning the very food and water that the ant animals and indigenous people live off of. Instead, they will tell you fairy tales about how tailing ponds are safe to drink from and fish from, and that the lands are being destroyed but will be brought back to their original state, when in fact fossil fuels are being taken from beneath the earth and being burned on an industrial scale, and areas the size of Kentucky are being cleared out for open mines for the sake of bitumen. They won't tell you that what one Cree man mistakenly told a Euro-Canadian fur trader about in the early 18th century would lead to experiments by Dr. Carl Clark in separating bitumen from the sands with steam and hot water in the 1920s, or that would be accelerated by OPEC's oil embargo in 1973, and a sustainable, I'm sorry, and a substantial investment from the American oil industry would lead to 2.3 million barrels of oil in 2014. They also won't tell you that roughly for every one barrel of oil, it takes three barrels of water to produce it. And finally, they won't tell you about the Cree Nation people that have been exploited with the use of their land and natural resources or that a slow genocide has been put into motion for the sake of oil. <laughs> 